Well, hello, everybody. Here we are again. Saturday just keeps happening, doesn't it? Welcome to our little corner of the podcast universe where we explore all things books with your host, D.L. White. That's me. This is the BookCast, my platform for sharing short fiction and updates on what I'm reading and writing. I'm an Atlanta-based author of romantic fiction featuring Black men and women. I'm also a big, big fan of books and the writing-ass writers who write them. So this podcast is usually book-heavy unless I'm talking nonstop about something I'm writing or just have written. If you're here for the writing content, hang in there. That train is pulling into the station very, very soon. If you're new here or you're a seasoned listener, a bibliophile, or just looking for a good read, I hope you enjoy today's show. I'm honored to have your ears for this time. I can't wait to share my love of reading with you. Today is Saturday, March 18th. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. That was fun. I have a really cute uh, like clover green t-shirt that I wear. It's called St. Petty's Day, which no one ever really catches, but it's like my own private joke that I got from my good friend, uh, Jen Jasper. She runs a t-shirt brand called God's Not Petty, But I Am, and her t-shirts are hilarious. Um, I literally have to stop myself from buying $100 worth of t-shirts every week. Anywho, it's Saturday. It's March 18th. I have my coffee, and I am ready to talk books, but first two things. I have uploaded new audiobook codes for Leslie's Curl and Die and The Guy Next Door. Now, you know, if you are a follower, a reader, or what have you, that's book one and book three in the Potter Lake series. Book two is a holiday short. It is like a novelette. It's super short. I read that myself So when I do the show notes for this episode, I will put a link to the episode where I read Second Time Around. That's book two in the Potter Lake series, but it's also a Potter Lake short, and it's too short to pay somebody to read that for audio. So um, congratulations, you get that one for free. But book one is Leslie's Curl and Die, and book three is The Guy Next Door. I have uploaded Spotify codes to that. Head to my website. It's booksbydlwhite.com slash codes. Tap on the book cover of the book that you want and snag yourself a code as long as they are available. Thing number two is there's not going to be an episode next week because it's going to actually be my birthday next Saturday is my birthday. I'm turning 49, 40 fine, as we say, right, right. Yes, thank you so much. Turning 49, I will not be uh, home. I am not packing my microphone. DL, let me just tell you this to your face, to your ears. Do not pack your microphone. I want you to get up and I want you to make some coffee and I want you to sit out on your balcony and stare at the ocean rushing in and out. I want you to read a delightful novel. I want you to pull out your iPad and start taking notes and planning out your characters for your next release and dig deep into this new book that you're thinking about, that you're kind of excited and almost obsessed about a little bit. Don't record a podcast. On your birthday. Past you is telling future you, don't do it. So next week, I'm probably just going to pop up a little throwback episode. Um, I do have some kind of filler things that I uploaded like way early in my podcast career that sound terrible. But hey, we don't wait until it's going to be perfect. We just do it and improve upon ourselves, right? Right. So Um, I'll throw up something next week that will be fun to listen to um, that will uh, post in my stead. And then I will be back on Saturday, April 1st, to talk about my vacation, to just brag about how much I got written, to talk about how much I read, and uh, mostly to talk about my beach view. I am very excited. I don't know if you can tell. So let's get into the books. But first, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. This thing alive and in its natural habitat is valuable to us. All righty. This week I read three books. Still a little low for me, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. This was um, a really a really busy week. I had two whole days away from my desk and uh, 
it's just not good for my reading life. You know what I'm saying? Like work is really biting into my reading lifestyle. But I'll tell you, I read The Thinnest Air I listened to, basically read by audio, um, The Thinnest Air by Minka Kent. Let me tell you something. If I want something that's got like some teeth and some grit to it, um, I always reach for um, a Karen Slaughter, but I've read all of her books. Minka Kent is um, someone I forget about often, but that woman can write her tail off. She writes a darn good book. Um, The Thinnest Air, listen to it. It was really good, really like threw me for a loop, had me going. I love when I can't uh, pick out the... um, I, like I can't pick out the killer. Um, the the twist always really throws me. Love a good twist. I also listen to Night Song by Miss Beverly Jenkins. I'm having kind of an unofficial Beverly Jenkins reread era, and I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm next up for me is Vivid by Miss Beverly Jenkins, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking forward to it. Then I listened to Kill Night by Victor Mythos, and this is an author that I looked up because I wanted a legal thriller that wasn't John Grisham, hush up, Dr. Raymond, because I have already read all of John Grisham's legal thrillers. Thank you so much. So I kind of bounce around looking for authors that are sort of like him. Victor Mythos is nothing like John Grisham, but I think I have read all of his past novels. And this was like a little two hour audible original. It's part of like a little collection. It's not bad. It's just something to pass the time. Uh, I listened to it. (laughs) It was it was pretty good. So that's what I got through last night. This week, of course, I said I am going to listen to Vivid by Beverly Jenkins. I also started The Build Up by Tati Richardson. This is a release. It's a rom-com featuring Black characters from Karina Press. I started this yesterday. I am already about 50% and loving it. It is so, like, I don't want, like, I don't want to say cute because when people say my books are cute, I'm like, really? Cute? I try not to compare my books to other people's, but y'all be reading other people and be like, oh, this book was hot. This book was grown and sexy. This book was so good. And then you listen to my books and they're cute. And I understand that I always have an element of humor in my books and I don't really get like, I don't really get gritty. I don't really get down and dirty when I write my books, but sometimes I'm like, when will my books be hot? When, when when will my books be grown and sexy? When, like, sometimes I read my books and I blush. Like, at what point do I graduate from cute to, girl, this book is hot? I don't think I'm ever going to get there because I can't catch up to Alexandria House. I ain't no Stephanie Nicole Norris out here in these streets. I'm just saying. Anyway, the buildup. It's cute. It is really good. It's so down to earth. It's set in Atlanta, which I love. Um, And Tati has this voice that's like, so it's very storyteller. It's easygoing. She is not yelling a book at you. She's bringing you along in the story. Um, This is really good. I hope it's going to come out in audio. I would love to listen to it, but I have um, an advanced reader copy, so I'm reading it. Let me just do the blurb really quick. A truly unfortunate first day of work leads to an unexpected love in this sparkling debut from Romance in Color podcast co-host Tati Richardson. And I do want to tell y'all, I am going to talk about podcast today and Romance in Color is on my auto listen list. Rumpled and ragged was not how architect Ari James envisioned kicking off her first day at a new firm and few things can top the horror of her new and extremely hot colleague walking in on her at the worst moment ever learning that she'll be working with him on the project that's supposed to get her career back on top makes it harder than ever to focus on her big comeback with a partnership at his firm on the line nothing is going to stand in the way of porter harrison absolutely killing it on his new project not his obnoxious rival Not his unpredictable brother, and definitely not his new co-worker whose gorgeous curves he accidentally saw and now can't get out of his head. Though neither of them is looking for love, once their creative juices get flowing, Ari and Porter's connection is obvious. 
But when their shared goal has always been winning at work, building a solid foundation for a relationship might end up costing them everything. Ooh, them stakes is high. The stakes are high. Um, There's lots of flirting. There's some tension. There's um, some comedy, of course, because in real life, people are funny. In real life, like weird things happen. In real life, stuff happens. And like, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. This is definitely one of those books. I want you to go to your nearest pre-read mechanism and snatch this up. It's going to be a hit. The Build Up by Tati Richardson. She is also co-host on the Romance in Color, C-O-L-O-U-R podcast. Um, That's also a super good podcast that features Black authors um, that uh, I I listen to every week. I am also going to pick up, uh, let me see what else am I going to pick up. Um, Black on Black on Our Resilience and Brilliance in America by Dr. Daniel Black. Um, Dr. Black was recently, like yesterday, so Friday the 17th, on Books Are Pop Culture, which is a podcast and a YouTube show hosted by Reggie Reeds and a Black Man Reading, a.k.a. Akili Nazuri, a.k.a. Jared P. Woods. Listen, go Watch slash listen, li- listen, listen to that episode. I need, I need more coffee. Dr. Black was showing out, absolutely showing out. When he talks about our, 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 our names, he talks about using the use of the N word. He just several times, he almost threw himself off the podcast because he was just doing too much. It is such a super fun episode. It is enlightening. It is intelligent. It is resilient. It is all of the all of the all of the big twenty five cent, fifty cent piece words made me actually go and see if my library had this book, and they do. But I was like, let me look up the audio book and see if I want the audio instead because I would always rather listen to a book. I look up this audio book. And is narrated by J.D. J. D. Jackson. Now, y'all know good and well, I want the audio. So I'm definitely, definitely uh, picking this up in audio. Super excited about getting this into my face, into my ears. I don't know when I'm going to read it, but I got it from the library. So sometime in the next 21 days. <laughs> but that's on the list for this week. And I am checking my list to see what else I have coming up. I think, yep, that's pretty much it. Vivid, The Build Up, and Black on Black. Next week, while I'm on vacation, I am digging into Not So Perfect Strangers by L.S. Stratton. Really excited about that because it's been, I want to say, about a year since I read, like, the really the first draft. I don't don't think it was the first draft. It was, like, the first, like, sort of finished draft draft. Here's where I'm going with this. And I was really excited about it. So I have conveniently forgotten a lot of it. And I'm excited to dig back into that. And then Lone Women, uh, I think I'm going to try to get to on vacation. I'm probably going to try to listen to this Black on Black while I'm on vacation. And a couple other things that are popping up. No, I know what else I was going to um, read. The Irresistible Husband series, which is a three book uh, simultaneous release by Sharon C. Cooper. Cheryl Lister and um, my good, good girlfriend, Delaney Diamond. Um, That's like a three book series. So I always say I don't have a TBR. I deleted my TBR because there was 500 books on it that I was never going to read. But I always say a TBR are books I'm reading while I wait for my faves to drop a heat rock. And so I am always just reading whatever until Delaney Diamond or Sharon or Cheryl drop a book. So Now, my weekend is going to be full of reading. It's going to be a very romance weekend. I'm going to finish up the build up today and then I'm going to go right into the Irresistible Husband series. Hold, please. This is actually the second edition of the Irresistible Husband series. Um, The the first set came out in September of 2020. It was Do Me by Cheryl Lister. Love Me by Delaney Diamond and Show Me by Sharon C. Cooper. And the next version is um, Marry Me by Delaney Diamond, Choose Me by Cheryl Lister, and Kiss Me by Sharon C. Cooper. 
to say I'm excited to read these would be an absolute understatement. So I am digging into those this weekend. I won't get them all read this weekend, but I do want to get them all started this weekend. Um, I'm very rarely reading um, like 900 romance books at a time, but um, I'm going to dig into those and get those read at some point over, you know, the next few weeks. Very excited about that. Happy release day, friends. So um, you guys should run out and and grab that at your favorite online retail. I don't think paperbacks are available yet, but it's definitely online in ebook. I want to talk a little bit today about podcasts because I am every day finding a new podcast to listen to. And like, I don't know how people keep track of the podcast that they listen to, but I, I literally have a spreadsheet <laughs> because that's the kind of person that I am. When I post the show notes for this episode, I'll post my links. This is a list that I keep of all the podcasts that I listen to or subscribe to. Also, the YouTube channels that I watch um, on occasion, people I'm subscribed to, mediums I'm subscribed to, substacks I'm subscribed to, and I just keep adding to it when I find a good one that I want to listen to. So, So I'll share that list, and if you have suggestions or if you find that you are not on the list and should be, I want you on it because I I share it so that people can find other podcasts that are relevant to what I read, what I listen to, what I watch. And that's typically black books, books by for about allies, books by for about people that are all about us getting to live the same life everybody else would be living. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the book is just really gosh darn good. It's just really well written. If you're talking about a book that's just gosh darn good, I might want to read it. It's time for me to update my spreadsheet and I'm going to share it just because I'm not going to gatekeep really good podcasts. But some time ago, I want to say this was when I started having a really long commute to work, I discovered podcasts. And this is just people talking about things I'm interested in. Is it money? Is it crime? Is it news, business, self-help? Is it slice of life? Is it entertaining? Is it books? Specifically talking about podcasts about books, black books. I listen to I listen to a lot of podcasts, you guys. Like this this the spreadsheet has 110 lines to it. That's including the headings, but I mean, that's like a hundred and I'm going to say a cool hundred lines of podcasts, YouTube shows, Substacks, medium blogs that I look at and I subscribe to for information, for entertainment, for content. When I look for a new podcast these days, I'm specifically looking for Black creators, Black hosts, because I typically find that Black creators and Black hosts are talking about books that I want to talk about, books that I want to read. And even if they aren't, they're coming at it from a perspective that I live in, that I get, that I understand. And I wanted to share some of the ones that I have on my list. Like I I have a routine. I am heavy into routine. I get up every day. I pull open my phone, I check my Facebook memories, (laughs) I check my Twitter feed to see who has replied to me in the dead of night, I check Instagram to see um, how many bots have followed me that I need to block (laughs) and remove from following me. Nothing drives me more crazy than having bots following me. But then I pull open my um, podcast app and right now I'm using Overcast and I, I really like it so far. And all the new podcasts that have uploaded overnight roll in at the top. And I just listen until I am out of podcasts. And sometimes I find a new podcast or I find a pod that has an episode I want to listen to. And I just add it to the list and then I kind of move them around. Um, So let's talk about what I am listening to right now. I, I just discovered a new podcast called But Make It Books. And I was laughing 
I was laughing at this episode. I had just listened to their inaugural episode, which just launched uh, on March 16th. Uh, <laughs> they said it sounds like he's saying, Brandon said it sounds like he's saying butt naked books. And it, it really does. It's called, it's dot, 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 ellipsis, of course, but make it books. Great inaugural episode, a little intro into both of them. And then they start talking about the books that they love. They talked about um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Home by Toni Morrison, Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred Taylor, Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, which is an amazing book. Um, the Secret Lives of Church Lady, The Fire This Time by James Baldwin. Um, so I was like, I'm so excited about this podcast because it's Black hosts talking Black books that I be reading. Black books that I read. Um, I'm very excited. Because lately, I feel like I'm going to stop listening or adding podcasts to my queue that are talking about books I don't read. Like, I don't typically read romance written by authors who aren't black or who aren't of color and and I'm putting that in air quotes so basically the author isn't white it's probably somewhere near my radar there's a lot of podcasts that talk a lot about books I'm just not I'm just not reading um and while I agree that like some books are just really good I'm, you know, I, I, I have a finite amount of time to read and I feel like I spent so much of my life reading whatever the New York Times bestseller list handed me that now I want to have full control over what I'm putting into my face, what I'm putting into my ears and what's driving my writing life now that I am an author. Um, I'm responsible for what goes in between my ears and I write black fiction I want to read black fiction. I want to read black nonfiction. I want to read authors that are are going to speak to my experience from a learned, shared experience. Um, and I just don't find a lot of that in podcasts that primarily focus on books by authors who are not black. So that's the direction I've been leaning in, but those aren't like the only podcast I listen to. For example, I really love the Categorically Romance podcast. They do on occasion have a Black author if they write Category Romance from Harlequin. I really enjoy this podcast, even though not all of the authors are Black. Of course, I listen to the Romance in Color podcast. Um, I also love the Spa Girls podcast. This is an author podcast. They um, always have, you know, authors or people who write software or apps or useful things that are pertinent to authors. Um, I also have just recently discovered the American Writers Museum has a podcast and they have a backlog of episodes that I really need to listen to. There's one on Octavia Butler from August 2022 I need to listen to. There's one on Maya Angelou from to 20 um 2021 there's one on Walter Walter Mosley from 2021 they do have some historical ones like I listened to um David Blight talk about his book on Frederick Douglass a few weeks ago while I put together my standing desk excellent episode um they also have a portion of their podcast called Dead Writer Drama where they talk about writers who um have passed and kind of the like the petty drama they've been involved in. There was one episode I really enjoyed on Zora Neil Zora Neil Hurston versus Langston Hughes. That was a really fun one. Um I have also been listening to the Redacted History podcast. They just did one on Woodrow Wilson and his wife, Edith, and how when Woodrow was sick and Edith was basically running the country. Can you imagine? It would never happen today. Never happen. Also, I'm listening to the Written in Melanin podcast, um, and I'm just rolling through what's here on my currently listening list. I've separated my podcasts on this spreadsheet by um, money crime news. So um, all of your like true crime podcasts and stuff are going to be in here. I listen to hashtag sisters in law every Saturday morning. That's basically a politics podcast. One of the hosts was an attorney on the um, was that president. 
<laughs> Why can't I think of that dude? Richard Nixon. She was an attorney on the uh, Richard Nixon case. 48 Hours in American Greed, of course, have podcasts. I listen to those um, when they pop up. Um, Business Wars uh, is one from Wonder. I haven't listened to Business Wars in a little bit because it's very scripted. And sometimes I just like, you know, I'm, I'm more of like an American greed. I, I really like mess. So I'm more of in like an American greed, American scandal kind of listener. But I keep it on the list. Dateline, of course, has a podcast. Um, Forensic Files. <laughs> Scam Goddess is a fun one. Um, I have a couple that I list, used to listen to for work. Uh, the Ambitious Admin and the Leader Assistant Podcast. Of course, y'all know I'm an executive assistant for Beverage Giant um, located here in Atlanta. And then I have a bunch of Slice of Life podcasts that I listen to. Uh, I'm a big fan of Futurama. So um, another lousy millennium goes through the entire Futurama series episode by episode absolutely loved it i did hear that futurama was releasing a new season and they are recording now y'all i'm looking at my bobbleheads on my desk i have in sync bobbleheads and can you tell me why jc shize is turned around and he's looking out the window excuse me hey sir i don't know i don't know how this happened because i am the only person that's ever in this room but he is literally turned around so I moved him. So now he's paying attention to me. <laughs> I swear I'm sane. I love anything from Wondery. The Dr. Death podcast um, is really good. The Dr. Death series, This Is Actually Happening, is a harrowing podcast to listen to. Um, it's ge- generally firsthand accounts of people have who have gone through trauma. Um Code Switch from NPR is a good one. Death, Sex, and Money is a never, ever, ever miss. Speaking of never miss, also the Stacks book, book podcast is a never mix. Never miss. Books or Pop Culture is also a never miss. Frontline, I prefer to watch Frontline on YouTube. Maintenance of A's and um, If These Books Could Kill are also great podcasts. I have like so many podcasts on this list. I don't want to go through all of them because it will just... It, this podcast will be hours long, but Terrible Thanks for Asking is also a never miss. I love that show, The Black Guy Who Tips, Three Guys On. I I am a member of the Patreon gang gang, and so that's the podcast that I listen to every Saturday afternoon. I just kind of sit in the comments, I watch while they record the podcast, participate in the conversation. Always a fun time. Unacceptable Behavior by Jason Graham is a fellow writer, and um, he has a great podcast that he talks about, you know, relationships and um, also writing books. Then I have a list of writing books and blogs, um, a whole bunch of helpful ones here if that's what you're looking for. I love, um, of course, the Spa Girls, Self Publishing Insiders. Six Figure Authors was a really good podcast that ended uh, last summer. They don't have any new episodes, but they have a super good backlog if you've never listened to them before. Between the Reads is my favorite book podcast. Um, Never Ever Miss. Black and Published is a new one that I have started listening to. Black Books are Pop Culture, of course. Brazenly Shady just released a new episode the other day. I haven't got a chance to look in- listen to it. Um, crime writers of color is uh, crime fiction or interviews with crime fiction authors who are uh, of color. Excellent podcast hosted by Robert Justice, who is also an author. You want to grab his debut novel, They Can't Take Your Name. The audiobook is voiced by J.D. Jackson, if you know what I'm saying. It's a great book. Um, Delaney Diamond Presents has a monthly podcast with um, the, the they pick a book of the month in her reader's lounge. And then she interviews the author. Um, I was on that. Um, I'll pop that up one of these uh, weeks here for a throwback Thursday episode. Faded Mates is always really fun. Um, Lit Society is a fun podcast. Stephanie Norris, that's an author podcast. She just when she updates, she talks about, you know, what she's writing. Um, what's coming up from her peach reading with as um, I was also on this podcast. It was um, fabulous. Um, Real Ballers Read is a podcast hosted by men. I believe they're brothers, if I'm recalling correctly. Pretty good podcast. Sisters in Crime. Staying on Code is a brand new podcast hosted by Audra Russell, who also hosts Between the Reads. Staying on Code is um, using nonfiction books to talk about Black how we engage in conversations about being black 
Um, I am looking up the description right now because I am not going to disrespect my sis Audra about the show. Staying on Code is dedicated to uplifting the Black race. Host Audra Russell uses nonfiction books written by and or about people of the African diaspora to inspire candid discussions about being Black in America. Guests run the gamut from authors and book influencers to bookstore owners and community leaders. So um, it's been super good, very educational and informational so far. So um Definitely add that to your podcast roundup. They're also on YouTube. So then I have some sub stacks that I have been subscribed to aggressively wide, which I talked about last week. Ronnie Lawrence, happy for now. And her new podcast is for authors. Um, the name of it escapes me, but I'm going to add it to this list and look for it in the show notes. Saeed Jones has a work in progress um, sub stack. And I think every Friday his dog Caesar does a post. And I live, I live for Caesar content because there's a person inside that dog. I'm pretty sure. Um, Caesar, Caesar is a person. Um, Robert Jones has a sub stack called Witness. I super miss Robert on social media, but Witness is a way that we can still hear his voice, um, I guess, really through writing. And I get his perspective. And then the Rand stack is um, one of my friends, writer Randolph Terrence, a writer, comedian, really starting up his uh, sub stack and getting in some writing. Um, a book is coming, I hope, eventually at some point. My medium subscriptions are pretty short. Dr. Raymond Williams has Ballast for the Mind. You want to subscribe to that. And then my, my friend, Nia Forrester has a medium blog that she updates super infrequently. And then I have a long list. Well, not long. It's about, I don't know, 20 YouTube channels. Said all that to say, I'm going to be going through and updating my list. So uh, bookmark it. If you have a podcast that you listen to or podcast that you host, got a podcast idea and it's about to launch, let me know and I'll add it to my list because this is a list that I make public this is what I'm listening to. This is, you know, podcast that I have found to be interesting or no noteworthy. And I just kind of want to keep a good list of pods that are good, pods that focus on books by, for, about Black authors, Black characters, Black lives, Black fiction. So probably going to spend some time maybe this week or next updating that list so that it's current. Phew. Well, I just rambled on and on about things. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't annoying or confusing. I'm trying to think you know, so I don't miss anything because I don't have an episode next week. I can't I can't come back and be like, hey, I forgot. I think I covered everything, y'all. So it's 954. I got that out in under an hour. It's only gonna take me another hour to edit. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for another episode of the bookcast. Again, as a reminder, I'll be on a vacation next week and I have promised slash ordered myself to not pack my microphone. I will not spend time in audacity aud editing audio to upload. I will not be at Buzzsprout scheduling an episode to run. I will probably pop something up uh, like a throwback episode for you guys to listen to. So that'll be fun. I will spend some time planning and writing. So please enjoy this weekend. Have a superlative two weeks. And I'll see you back here on Saturday, April 1st. No fooling. I really wrote that down to say no fooling. Because get, get it? It's, a, it's April 1st. Whatever. I'm funny. You know a podcast I didn't mention that I totally need to. Otherwise, I am going to shun myself. The Frosted Tips podcast from Lance Bass. Here's the whole reason that I looked at my bobbleheads and I noticed that JC was not listening to me. And so I had to turn him around because I was going to mention the Frosted Tips podcast by Lance Bass and then I got distracted. So Lance Bass has had, I think this podcast started in January, maybe. He has been having boy banders or former boy banders on the podcast to talk all about their lives before, during, and after being in a boy band. It has become one of my favorite things about Monday Morning, a new podcast. This week, he had an extra with Debbie Gibson. I can't describe the love I used to have for Debbie Gibson. I was all about 
some Debbie Gibson. Fantastic episode. Monday's episode was with Johnny Gill from New Edition. It's just been, it's been fun. Uh, there's a couple of people on like Joel McHale. I guess he's from Glee. I don't know that guy. I didn't listen to that episode. I'm sorry, Lance. But all the other ones, I have been all up in it. There's guys, um, he recently had the remaining member of LFO on to, he was talking about Rich and Devin and meeting Lou Pearlman and like all that stuff. If you're not in boy band land, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you are in boy band land, I am sure you're like, oh my goodness, I have got to listen to that podcast. You've got to listen to the podcast. The first episode is with JC Chazay. Need I say more? Probably. But um, that was a fantastic episode. I think the second episode was with Joy Fatone, also from NSYNC. So dip it up, listen to that. Lance is also voicing The Last Soviet, which is all about this cosmonaut that I guess got stuck in space while there was some Cold War going on. Um, he is a cosmonaut, so he was going to go into space during the last um, NSYNC hiatus and something happened and he wasn't able to go, but now he is um, talking about his experiences. This last episode is his experience of being chosen to go into space and his training. He had to have heart surgery to be able to be eligible to go up into space. Ended up not going, which really sucks, but I'm a love in the podcast. Seriously, I'm done. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for dragging yourself through this episode or really enjoying the episode, whichever your perspective is. I am off to get into my books, to edit this episode, to enjoy my coffee and my Saturday. The sun's finally out. It's not raining in Atlanta anymore. And I am happy. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your ears. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening to this podcast. We'll talk soon. Thank you.